गुड इवनिंग डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर भारत के श्री स्वाइन टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट लाप्लास ट्रांसफर लाप्लास ट्रांसफर ऑफ एनी फंक्शन सो हो विल स्टडी लाप्लास ट्रांसफर ऑफ एनी फंक्शन बिकॉज इट हैज सो मेनी एप्लीकेशंस इन अप्लाइड मैथमेटिक्स इन इंजीनियरिंग प्रॉब्लम्स इन इंडस्ट्रियल प्रॉब्लम्स Uh, particularly it is uh, very important when uh, when it is uh, we will go through the problems where the mechanical or uh, electrical driving force has discontinuities and it is impulsive or is a complicated periodic function and this laplace transform is also very applicable uh, and it has uh, so many advantages to solve the problem of a differential equation particularly when we will uh, solve the initial value problem using this laplace transform method the good advantage is what that directly you can find the solution the general solution without solving the homogeneous uh, equation so first i will uh, discuss the definition of uh, laplace transform so what is the definition that uh, uh, let f of t be a given function that is uh, defined for all t greater than equal to 0 you must uh, note that this t greater than equal to 0 it is very very important it may not be less than 0 and if this integral that means uh, integral from integration from 0 to infinite uh, e to the power minus st f of t dt exists if this integral exists then it is called laplace transform of f of t and uh, where it is a function of the uh, variable s because if you integrate it the resulting function will be a function of s so we can write it as laplace of f of t because this is laplace transformation of f of t is equal to f of s because it's a variable of s the result will be a function of s and that is integration from 0 to infinity e to the power minus st f of t dt again we can say this original function that is uh, f of t whose laplace transformation we would like to find uh, this original function f of t is called inverse transform of inverse of f of s that means you can write it as f of t is equal to laplace inverse of f f of t is equal to laplace inverse of f of a so you should note that your uh, transformation function after transformation we will get a function of s and when we go through the or we will go to find the inverse function or inverse of transform inverse transform the result will be a function of t that means the original function we will get taking this inverse and taking laplace we will get function of s so your original function will be a function of t and the uh, transform function will be a function of s now question is whether laplace transform of every function exists can we find laplace transform of every function or there is some conditions under which laplace transform exists so for this we will see here the existence of Laplace transformation, existence of Laplace transformation. So, so what is the theorem? We can see the theorem. Let f of t be a function that is a piecewise continuous. That is what is, uh, that means. Question is what is piecewise continuous now? So piecewise continuous means that if a function is continuous in an interval and now if we uh, divide this interval into sub intervals and in every sub intervals 
if the function is continuous, then you can say the function is piecewise continuous. Right? So now, on every finite interval in the range t greater than equal to 0 and satisfies mod of f of t less than equal to m into e to the power k t for all t greater than equal to 0. That means we have two condition here your function of f of t function f of t uh, must be piecewise continuous first and secondly uh, this must satisfy this inequality that means mod of f of t less than equal to m into e to the power k t that means it must not be increased exponentially and in some cases in some books it is also called growth restriction growth restriction so your function uh, must not grow exponentially so this is the second condition and for some constant k and m this k and m then the laplace transform f of t exists so we can see here in the before uh, we have already said that f of t must be defined and secondly uh, this must be piecewise continuous then in third and this must satisfy the inequality mod of f of t less than equal to m into e to the power t. So under this condition Laplace transform exists. So we can say here that Laplace transform of every function does not exist and if the function satisfies these conditions then Laplace transform exists. Then you can say that what are the examples when Laplace transform does not exist. So can you give some examples here? Yes. So what are the examples? Suppose we write e to the power t square. e to the power t square. So if you note it here, e to the power t square, if you give the value uh, when t greater than equal to 0, if we give the value of t here, it will be increase, it will increase exponentially. So Laplace transform of e to the power t square does not exist. Clear? Again, another example you can say, give uh, suppose 1 by t. 1 by t. Another example. Laplace transform of 1 by t exists or not? No, it does not exist. Why? Its integral will not exist. By the definition of Laplace transform of f of t, the integral of 1 by t will not exist. It will be. So, under these conditions, Laplace transform exists. Now, we will go for some examples how to calculate how to calculate a Laplace transform of any function. Suppose here uh, one example. Suppose the function is one f of t is equal to 1 and here t greater than equal to 0 it is obviously by definition so if f of t equal to 1 then find laplace of f of t so by the definition first we will calculate how so laplace f of t equal to laplace of means so here f of t equal to 1 so that's why laplace of 1 means integration from 0 to infinity with the definition e to the power minus st into f of t so since f of t is equal to 1 here it is given so into 1 into dt now if you integrate and question is what uh, here you must say that or you must see here we have to integrate with respect to t not with respect to s here dt and uh, considering s as constant you just integrate and if you integrate it it will be e to the power minus st divided by minus s as usual formula and limit is from 0 to infinity and now it is uh, minus 1 by s and since this is at the limit of uh, t only, so that's why you can uh, take out minus 1 by s and that is e to the power minus st and limit is 0 to infinity. Now if you put the limit here, it will be minus 1 by s and uh, it will be e to the power minus infinity and why it is minus infinity and we have to say that it is most most important, very very important that s must be greater than 0 and if you take s greater than 0 then 
and this value will be zero because e to the power minus s t. If you take s, suppose s is less than zero, then it will not be e to the power minus infinity. It will be plus infinity. So it will be infinity. E to the power infinity will get. So that's why uh, this s must be greater than zero. If s greater than zero, then the value will be e to the power minus infinity, and this will be zero. So minus one by s. Whole into zero into and and by putting the lower limit that is e to the power zero will be one. So minus one by s into zero minus one and the value will be one by s. So uh, we write here the Laplace of one is equal to one by s. When it will be one by s when s greater than zero. So we can use Laplace of one. Is equal to one by s in the next problem or different problem when we will face different problems. So in the next video we will solve several types of problems uh, of this Laplace transformation and uh, the further topics we will discuss in the next video. Thank you all. Thank you.